Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We got a lot to rejoice for, y'all. Yes, 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 we do. We almost into August. Mm. Almost into August. It was nice outside this weekend, y'all. It was not on fire. <coughs> Amen. Right. Amen. It had been on fire here for a while. Yes. But God is good. Oh, Even God. through the fire, he's still good. He kept us. Amen. 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 So I just invite everybody <laughs> on today to praise God for whatever it is that you're going through. Because we all going through something. So you might as well praise him if you like. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your love yes. and your mercy and your yes. grace. We thank you for the free gift of eternal life. We thank you that we are able to be here yes. to pray for each other. We pray for Retrieve Your Life Ministry. We ask you to just to touch each one right here today. Just touch them and lift them up. We thank you for the Holy Spirit being with us, keeping us day by day. Thank you for answer prayer, Lord. We ask you to just to be with our pastor as he brings the word to each one of us, Lord. Whatever you would have us to get from it, let us get it. Thank you for the food, Lord. Thank you for nourishing our bodies, Lord. Thank you for healing. Just touch each one today, Lord. Touch them in whatever they need. Give it to them and let them receive it. Thank you. Thank you for all your many wonderful answered prayers. Thank you for our pastor's vision, Lord. Just bring it to pass. Bring it to tuition, Lord. Thank you for the lady, Lord, and her ministry. Just take care of her, lead her and guide her and direct her path. Thank you for answered prayer with these and all of the blessings I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen. 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 Grace. Amen. I don't know what I'm about, but God's grace. I made it this far by God's grace. Yes, yes. No matter what you have to face, no matter yes. what storm comes your way, it was God's grace. Yes. And, you know, we think about it, none of us have made it this far without his grace. No? Amen. Amen. It was God's grace that woke us up this morning. Amen. God's grace. Amen. What a song, what a song, what a song we hear this morning. Because it was God's grace. You know, because we're going to talk about so many things this morning. But when that song came on about God's grace, it just kind of like put a lot of things in perspective. Amen. About just how grateful we really should be. Amen. Amen. You know, I think we 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 take we take God for granted. Mm. Uh, we really do. I mean, we 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 expect to wake up in the morning. Mm. <laughs> you know, we do. We go to bed. We say a prayer, but we just we just expect to wake up in the morning. And just the little things, you know, how about just just water? Amen. Water. Okay. Just just water. Amen. Not sodas or tea, water. Amen. You know, what, what would you do without water? Oh, you know, the, the little things. We've gotten accustomed to light, electricity. What would you do with no electricity? When your lights go out, you, we'd, be, we'd be in a pan. <laughs> ain't got no air or we ain't got no heat. Like you had all that all your life. <laughs> Amen. You know, we, we, back in the day when you we we with no air we no, no air conditions in the projects. Amen. It wasn't none of them houses. Wasn't none. You right. Wasn't none of them houses either. Especially when it was just one 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 way in and one way out the back. Right. Throw a fan in the front door. Throw a fan in the back door. And let the air come on in. Right. Fans in the window. <laughs> Seven floor projects. Fans up in the window. <laughs> 
God grace. God grace. And think about where you are now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got air conditioning in your house. Yeah. Air conditioning in your car. Yeah. Air conditioning on your job. Yeah. Some of you are living. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, that's an air conditioning car. We ain't even had no car. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We had to walk everywhere we had to go. Amen. My dad didn't have no car. But every time, every time he had one, he had got towed up, or he, he's out there. He's always working on it. So, Amen. <laughs> That damn then the nine out of ten with nobody riding but him and his partners. <laughs> right. You know, wasn't like we was going nowhere. <laughs> we walked everywhere we had to go. So I'm just, I'm just telling you, it was God's grace. Yes. You know, it was God's grace. I, I, I'm just so grateful. I, I was looking at people yesterday. I went bowling with my family yesterday, and they, my siblings and, and, and niece and nephews, and they was all talking about just general things, you know, about uh, the houses and cars and all these things that we just take for granted. You know Amen. what I'm saying? And everybody was happy and having a good time. And then, you know, we got we started talking about how much money people make and all that. I said, you know what? I ain't got no job. I don't make no money. They're like, you know what? You need to quit. Stop right there. Because, you know, I said, you know, but it's God's grace. It's God's grace. I mean, I just told them I'm just grateful. I'm thankful that I am where I am. Amen. And God has blessed me tremendously. Amen. Where, you know, even, 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 I don't even need a job. Mm, mm, mm. Then somebody had to remind me that I did have a job on Sunday. I say amen. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go to work. I said, well, that's the only job I have to get up early to go to. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm in the elders mode now. Just wake up when you feel like it. All right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Y'all gonna get there. Amen. Amen. Y'all gonna get there. Keep on living. God's grace. That's all I'm gonna say is God's grace. Cause one of these days y'all kids gonna be 40, 30, 40. y'all gonna be grandparents. Amen. We're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be digging worms. You know what I'm saying? Digging worms. Amen. And when they get to be forty, we're gonna be digging worms. I know. So a lot of us gonna be, we're gonna be like, well, hey, it was good while it lasted. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day today. Uh, it's not hot outside and burning up. Amen. God gave us some good weather. I'm thankful for that. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to see everybody's faces again this 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 Sunday morning. Amen. As we continue to just give thanks to God, let's just you know just remember who we are Amen. and how far we've come and Amen. who brought us here. Amen. Because everything that we do, if it had not been for the Lord, yes, we wouldn't have. Yes. So God has been good to everyone in here. We've all been blessed. One way or another, we've been blessed, you know. And don't think about materialistic things. Amen. But you, you're blessed. And I, I just continue to pray that God keep on blessing each and every one of you, that he just give you an abundance of blessings. Amen. Amen. You know how we do it our YLM. Mr. Goldblatt, he announced a little joy that there's something I can't figure out. What's that, Joey? Asked Mr. Goldblatt. Well, according to the Bible, the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, right? Right, said Mr. Goldblatt. And the children of Israel beat up the Philistines, right? All uh, right. And the children of Israel built the temple, right? Again, you're right, little Joe. And the children of Israel fought the Egyptians, and the children of Israel fought the Romans, and the children of Israel was always doing something important, right? <laughs> All that is right to agree, Mr. Goldblatt. So what's your question, Joe? What I want to know is this. What was all the grown-ups doing? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say it like you mean. This, this is my Bible. This, this is my God. God. 
the word of God, God and who I will trust. trust. Amen. Amen. If you would turn your Bible to the book of Luke, the third book of the gospel. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. Mm -hmm. Eight. Like eight balls. <laughs> you know what? I just, I just, I, 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 I know why you're laughing, Mark, because I, I, I just thought about it. It hit me too when I said it. The funeral man, Brother Marlon, did, well, Brother, Brother Marlon did uh, conduct an officiate over Friday. Was the young man's name was uh, at Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Bailey. But his nickname, everybody called him Eight Ball. <laughs> Chapter 8. <laughs> Starting at verse 11. Amen. 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 Reading out the NIV and the word of God reads thus. This is the meaning of the parable. And I'm starting at the meaning of the parable because if you go back in your Bibles and read in chapter 5 through 9, you see where he talks about this parable. And then here in chapter 11, he gives his, uh, the, the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who receive the word of the Lord when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a good crop. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Shortly, shortly, it's going to be a short one this day. And we're going to talk about this morning. Where will it fall today? Where will it fall today? This is one of the best known parables, you know, the sower and the soil that's told by our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's told by him in Luke, like we say in chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. And then he gives the explanation of that parable in 11 through 15. So like when the soul went out to sow, he sowed the word of God according to verse 11. Amen? And the word of God is sown when a person hears the word of God preached. The word of God is sown when a person listens to the word of God read. And the word of God is sown when a person reads the word of God for him or herself. Amen. So when the word of God is sown, it falls into one of four types of soil. And the soil will be symbolic. Understand that the soil will be symbolic for the heart. So the four types of hearts we're going to talk about where the word falls today, point number one, the stubborn heart. <laughs> because in verse 12, where he says, those on the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. There is no time for our true interest in the word of God with a stubborn heart, amen? Amen. amen. Because you know, when your heart is stubborn, you, 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 can't, you can't hear the word, let alone understand the word, or even receive it. And there's so many people today that sit in God's house or sit in their own house and have a stubborn heart, yet wanna read the word, <laughs> Amen. Amen. But really, you have no true interest in the word. See, that, that's that's a difference for somebody that has an interest in the word, and then one someone that has, doesn't have really a true interest in the word because your heart is stubborn, and your heart is stubborn because you are stubborn. <coughs> and you know, in this world today, there are so many stubborn people. They stuck in their ways. They won't change. So that's the problem right there, right there. When it comes spiritual to spirituality, they don't want to change. You can't, you know, you can't be saved and say you're gonna follow God and be all in the spiritual realm and you don't want to change. You want to stay the way you are. It just don't work that way. There has to be some change. 
especially in your heart. Amen. Because you got to be cold from stubborn to be loving. Amen. Amen. And as hard as that may seem, it can happen. Amen. It can happen. Keep on coming. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I took a page from Sam's uh, Sam ministry like that. Amen. <laughs> Stuff and heart. Part number two, shallow heart. In verse 13, he talks about those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. Because they believe for a while, but in time of testing, they fall away. See, there is an instant joy's response to the preaching of or reading of God's word. However, it is surface level response. Amen. Amen. The minute something arises in our little lives, in the way of temptation <laughs> or storm, the results of the seed being planted, it's like you might just flush them down the toilet. <laughs> that, that's, that's what we do. That, that is just what is the shallow heart. See, we always think we got this strong heart. But then, you know, when that storm comes, your heart gets so shallow. You know why? Because you're a shallow person. That's right. <laughs> Ooh. See, it's time for people of God to start really being people of God and stop being so fake with God. How can you be fake with God when he already know your shallow and your stubborn heart? Of course. <laughs> and, you know, you got to... Even when say you joyous to the response of the preaching or the reading of God's word. Oh, I'm receiving. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, amen, Pastor. <laughs> Walk out the door and have two flesh. All them. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that joyous spirit you just had? <laughs> Temptation. It arises. And the seed, as you can see, the results just fall on up to the wayside. Mm -hmm. You might want well to drop them on the curb and just let them just blow on away. <laughs> because it's a shallow heart. We got to learn how to withstand what the devil is throwing at us and be able to combat him. Even on his own turn. It ain't saying you're going to win the battle. Because the battle is not yours. It's the, Lord. it's the Lord's. But see, when you're in the battle, you got to learn how to call on the Lord. Okay? Amen. Because a lot of people get in a battle and get in a situation and immediately anger, frustration, depression, feeling oppressed. But instead of calling on the Lord, we get on our cell phone. <coughs> we get on our cell phone and calling whoever we think can comfort us at that particular time. We're looking for comfort. Oops, my bad. What'd you say, Lord? You sent the comfort. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't he tell us? Yes. He was going to send the comfort? You already have a comforter that's already there with you, yet you seeking comfort from some human. They can't give you comfort because they don't know how to give comfort for themselves. Because they might be going through a storm in their own self, and you calling them with your issue. Amen. <laughs> so now you both on the phone trying to comfort one another. And ain't nobody once said, let's pray. <laughs> Shadow hearts. Amen. Point number three. In verse 14, point number three is the strangled heart. Because in verse 14, he said, the seed that fall among thorns stands for those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. The strangled heart. Because so here, here the seed starts to grow, but it's strangled by the characteristics and pleasures of this life. 
Because the world throws a lot of stuff at us that, that we think is good. You, under, you understand what I'm saying? You know, we, 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 look. We all got a lot of seed that fall on thorns. We all hear the word. Because our seed, just when it starts to grow, and we feeling good, here comes that devil. Choking everything out of you. And your seed sort of falling. You ever seen one of them cartoons where they just hold you up and down, everything falling out? <laughs> That's just how you looking right now. The devil just holding you upside down. Every, all, your, all your seeds falling out. And you saying, help, help. Who you talking to? Right. So now if I'm being sure, I'm going to help me, Lord. Help me right now, Jesus. But see, we don't do that. We don't call on the name of the Lord. We call on everybody else but the Lord. And this is why, you know, I'm telling you, this is why we have stubborn hearts. This is why our hearts are shallow, because our, our minds are shallow. And this is why we get strangled. Our hearts get strangled. Because even though we try to read, we try to do all the good things that God wants us to do. Just the minute when we say, oh, things are looking up, and that, oh, oh, I see a sprout. I, I feel some spiritual growth here. And the devil say, yeah, okay, you get a little bit too close to God. Let me pull you back for a minute. You know, I'm, let's go over here. You don't, you don't, don't, forget them folks, you don't need to be around there. Let's go over here. You know, it's party over here. You know, that party hot too, ain't it? It's going to be hotter than that when you get up out of here. <laughs> I'm here to tell you this morning to stop being choked by life's worries, by life's riches, and life's pleasures. Stop worrying so much. Why do you worry when you know you're a child of God? Why do you worry? I, I, for the life of me, I, I'm. I keep trying to teach that and preach that. Why, why do we worry when we know who we are? Why do we care about riches so much? You're already rich. Quit thinking about money all the time. You're already rich. You you rich in it. You, you you got good you got good health. You got children that got good health. Amen. Amen. Be, thank God for the blessings. You rich. And don't even know it. The pleasures of life. The pleasures of life are just being around family. Doing things. Being around church family. Whatever. It ain't always about, you know, uh, uh, going to Vegas and uh, going to Cancun. and You know what I'm saying? I mean, life's pleasures can draw you in and suck you up. And don't get me, don't get, don't, don't misquote me, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with taking vacations, okay? You, you should enjoy yourself, have fun. But remember who you are. Amen. Don't get strangled by the devil. Because when he gets a hold of your heart, he gonna try to choke you out. Remember the devil comes to seek, kill, and destroy. Amen. That's his job. And if he can strangle your heart, let, let, put, let me tell you something. You already know you, what your heart does. It beats. That's what keeps you alive. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. Heart starts beating, what else? You did, right? The Satan, what do you think Satan trying to do? Bible already told you, he, he comes to seek, kill, and destroy. Did you forget the second word, kill? He wants to choke you out. Amen. Strangle your heart. When he strangles your heart, it stops beating. And your life can't stop bleeding, beating, not bleeding, stop beating when you start thinking and worrying about these cares and riches and pleasures of life. Because when you start worrying about all that stuff and thinking about all that stuff, what comes upon you? Stress. How many of y'all been stressed out lately? 
Amen. Amen. You better let it go. Y'all ain't no spring chickens. <laughs> Amen. See, young folks, they can have an anxiety attack. Or, you know, they, you know, they can bounce right back from it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Let us have one. These young folks can have an anxiety attack and bounce back. I'm telling you, I done done it. I done had some major ones and bounce right back. Let me have one now. It's going to be hard to kind of bounce back off. First of all, you're going to think you're having a heart attack or did you age? You know what I'm saying? we got to stop worrying about so many things. Life's too short, people. And everybody's not going to live forever. Wait a minute, hold up. Ain't nobody going to live forever. All right. Brother Morton said it best Friday morning. Every last one of us is going to leave here. Every last one of us. Nobody is going to stay here. And he didn't touch on Revelation when he was talking about, you know, the dead shall rise. <laughs> and I'm, I'll, I'll be the first to always say, you know, I don't want to be here when he come back. I, I pray that if I got a stubborn heart, that it, it can be healed. If my heart is shallow and I'm a shallow person, Lord, help me. I don't want to strangle her. I don't want to see. I'm trying to fight that devil as much as I can. And last, the last point, I'm going to let y'all go. We're going to talk about the submissive heart. Yeah, you know, submitting, submit. You know, the thing that we don't like to do, we don't want to submit to nobody. Amen. Because verse 15 said, but the seed on good soil. See, I just read to y'all about the three that got the bad soil, right? Now, the last one, the submissive heart, this is the one that got the seed on good soil. And I'm going to ask you ahead of time, where does the word fall in your life this morning? What kind of heart does it hit? Huh? Ask yourself, is, is you, do you have a stubborn heart this morning? Is your heart shallow? Do you have a strangled heart? Some of y'all ain't going to say nothing because you know you, you fit in one of those three categories. <laughs> All because right. this last one, the submissive heart, you know you're struggling with that. <laughs> All right. Amen. Because the word says, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain the word, and by persevering, produce a good crop. Huh. The submissive heart, you all, is more than a hearer of the word. Mm. He is a doer, he or she, is a doer also. They keep it and they bear fruit. Amen? Amen. Where does your heart fall this morning? Where, where, where does the word fall in your life this morning? I mean, you got, you got to evaluate. It's time for some evaluations. Even though the Bible tells us every day that we should examine ourselves, it's time for an examination today. It's like, you know, you got to go see the doctor. You, you go get your annual checkup. Am I right or wrong? Amen. You're right. Huh? You're right. This morning it's time for y'all to go to the Lord and get an examination. You know, it's your time. Because you need to know where does the word fall in your life? And what kind of heart does it hit? Because this submissive heart you got to be submissive, not to me, not to your spouse, not to your children, but to God. So where will it fall today? Remember I told you earlier, we're talking about the heart this morning. Huh? We did the soil, we're talking about the symbolic for the heart. So where will it fall today? What is your heart going to be like? You need to ask yourself those questions. Man, I, can, I sure can be stubborn sometimes. <laughs> I'm talking about me. But I knew I, I, I knew I could be I could be stubborn as a mule. Ain't no if ands or buts about it. I could be nice and smile and everything, but if I get to that point, I'm like a rock. I ain't moving. I'm stubborn. I mean, I'm I'm stu I'm very stubborn. See, some of y'all ain't seen that side of me yet. 
And I pray to God you don't. I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to show it to you. Amen. Shallow heart. I don't consider myself shallow. I try to do what I can with preaching and reading the word of God. That strangled heart, he gets me sometimes, you know, he 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 he, he sure try to choke me out. Amen. And sometimes you black out for a moment, you know, like somebody choking you, you black out, then you come back. That's just how Satan be doing me. I black out sometimes, but I, I had to come back. I had to, got to stay in that word. Got to stay in that word. Then I've learned how to be submissive to God. And everything that he's called and required of me to do, I try to do it to the best of my ability. Amen. Amen. Not saying that everything I do is right. Not saying that everything I say is right. But I just try to do, I try to do what is required by him. I ain't got to a point in my life where it doesn't matter what man or people say, think, rumor, whatever, what people say, it doesn't matter anymore. Because people are going to talk about you no matter what. Amen. Amen. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to love you. Praise the Lord. L love those that, that don't love you. Amen. Amen. See, we got to learn how to be what God wants us to be. And stop being what man say we should be. Man has already done enough damage. Even to the word. Amen. And it's time for the people of God to stand on the principles of what his word says. And check your heart. And get it examined. Amen. The doctor is waiting. <laughs> and that, what I love about this doctor, he's open 24-7. His, his, his office never closes. Amen. Amen. You can go get an exam at 3 o'clock in the morning if that's what you want to do. And that's what I love about this doctor. Even when I'm hurting, I can, I can wake up in the middle of the night and go to the doctor. Amen. See, every now and then, we all need to go see the doctor. Amen. Because every last one of us in here needs some healing from something. We all need some healing. Examine your hearts today, you all. Where will it fall today? Where will your heart actually fall today? And what kind of heart does it hit? I gave you four symbolic hearts. What category do you fall in? And that's what I love about God. It's never too late to fix it. Amen. Amen. And, I, and, and God is always willing and able to help you along the way. Sometimes you just have to really look at yourself and just thank God for who you are. No matter what your body, what shape you are, no matter what shape you in, whether you out of shape, in shape, whether you tall, short, skinny, large, doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is your heart. And what kind of heart you have. Stop hating. There's too many haters, enough haters in the world already. Our God is a God of love. Am I right or wrong? Amen. Right. And that's what he teaches us. Love one another. As I have loved you. And God has not one day stopped loving you. Not one day. This is why I ask you all to love those that even hate you. I ain't say you got to hang out. <laughs> love those that even hate you. Love them with the love of the Lord. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's not going to hurt you. Because when you got hate plus hate, 
equals hate. Hate plus love equals love. Because love is always going to conquer evil. And our God is a God of love. He's not a God of evil. That, that's, that's Satan's job. I, I, I'm going to let y'all go after I, I, I read this week that science, scientists, they all met some, I think it was Caltech, MIT, Cal Berkeley, and that was another university out in California, I can't think of the name of it. Cal, MIT. And all these scientists got together and they have determined that we were made by atomic matter in the universe. God didn't make us. There is no God. We came into Earth's atmosphere and the matter was formed into man. <laughs> now there's still a lot of matter out there in space. <laughs> and Earth is still here. Amen. And I ain't seen nobody fall out of the sky <laughs> and be formed as a human being. And I'm sitting there reading this like, do they ask? I said, but you know what? Somebody's going to believe this. Amen. <laughs> Somebody's going to say, oh my God, for oh, no. I knew there wasn't no God. <laughs> When all you got to do, stupid, is look to the sky. There's matter, on, there's matter every single day, 24-7, up in space. There's nothing falling down here, and then another human. I mean, if that's the case, why women burn children? I know they, they can take that pain away from y'all and I'll just reach up in the sky and grab you one. Right, 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 right. right, right, right. You want five children? Two. Okay. Give me the black one right there. <laughs> How ridiculous does that sound? I, I, and I, I had to, I'll be honest, I had to think about it for a minute because I'm saying, that just can't be. And I'm like, where did they get this? Then it hit me. Wait a minute. This 2017, I ain't seen nothing fall from the sky. And Earth's still there. Matter's still up in space. I'm just saying, you all, I just want to just share that with y'all as a nugget that we serve an awesome and a mighty God. And just to show you that man wants you to believe everything that man wants you to believe. This is why man interprets the Bible the way he wants to interpret it. Instead of staying with what God says, this is why man tells you how you should live and people get caught up with, you know, wanting to live at a, at a level above their means. <coughs> Amen. 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 Quit trying to keep up with the Joneses. Don't let the Joneses get you down. <laughs> it's not like some do. It was. <laughs> you old folks know about that. Right. Young folks, yeah, yeah, they probably know about it. They know, they know, I know they know who the temptations is. Amen. So, this morning, I just wanted you to, like I say, just evaluate yourselves. Look at yourselves. Look at your heart. And go to the doctor. If you need, if you need an appointment, make one. I'm making mine right now. Amen. Because every last one of us needs some help from the doctor. Amen. Amen. This is my message to you all this morning. The word of God. Where will it fall? And I just want you all to know that today if you really trust our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sometimes it takes, you, you really should read the parables that he talks about. Because there's someone in here 
every day in your life the parable that Jesus taught. There's a parable in there for you. Amen. And I'm just praying this morning that this parable today that Jesus talked about touched somebody and gave them some